Hello everyone, I am Dr. Swaru. Welcome you all to my YouTube channel Pathotechy on pathology and technology related videos. If you are new to my channel, click subscribe to encourage us and see the latest on Pathotechy channel. Post your questions in the comment section. This video will be on pathology and will cover the topic congenital heart diseases. This is the second of the videos on congenital heart diseases and will cover the topic left to right shunts. This video will be by Dr. CSBR Prasar, Professor of Pathology at Sri Devra Jaras Medical College. And the congenital heart diseases in order to understand clinically in a better way are classified into depending upon the shunt as I told already left to right or right to left or it may be a simple obstruction causing. Uh, the congenital anomalies. So, coming to the first uh, segment that is malformations causing left to right shunt. So, this left to right shunt you, if you recall, recollect your physiology left side of the heart is uh, having higher pressure and right side of the heart at a lower pressure. So, when there is a shunt between these two that are like uh, ventricular septal defect or atrial septal defect blood flows from left side into the right side. So, it may not be associated with cyanosis and uh, this is very important point. So, the for, for congenital heart diseases where you will see right to left shunt are associated with the development of uh, cyanosis from the birth from, from, from the time of birth. Whereas, the congenital heart diseases where there is left to right shunt they may not have uh, the cyanosis to start with, but in the course of time after few years they may land in development of cyanosis because of reversal of shunt. It is known as Eisenmenger syndrome. So, these are the examples for common uh, left to right shunts that is ASD atrial septal defect where you can see the defective, uh, defective atrial septum and ventricular septal defect is the second one where you will see defect in the ventricular say interventricular septum and uh, the PDA instead of closing it remains patent. And coming to the second segment that is malformations causing right to left shunt and they are usually associated with cyanosis from birth. And uh, the, the, this peculiarity of this syndrome is that they, in addition because of this deoxygenated blood circulating in the uh, body uh, they will exhibit a peculiarity known as hypertrophic osteoarthropathy where you will see the patient uh, developing uh, clubbing involving almost all digits and in addition to that there will be thickening of the bone, thickening of the skin. Okay. And uh, because of this deoxygenated state the patient may have in addition polycythemia. And another important uh, clinical implication of this right to left shunt is paradoxical embolism. I told you in the beginning paradoxical embolism the instead of um, uh, uh, we can predict the embolus that is originating from the venous system to go into the pulmonary circulation, but in this paradoxical embolism instead of going into the pulmonary circulation it enters into the systemic circulation. So, for this entry there should be some um, openings either in the atrial system or in the interventricular septum. So, this is associated with uh, the paradoxical embolism, but this paradoxical embolism also can occur without any proper communication. I will tell you in the uh, later slides. So, congenital heart disease these are the some of the examples you can see that uh, clubbing very well characterized here in this uh, uh, patient where you can see that uh, enlargement of the tips of the fingers ok. It is one of the manifestation of uh, hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. Here again almost all digits are involved in this uh, swelling um, you will call this as clubbing and you can see that uh, joint involvement in the form of swelling and the facial, facial involvement in the form of thickening of the skin. So, these are all the examples for uh, pulmonary uh, sorry this uh, osteoarthropathy ok. These are the clinical examples for uh, uh, the congenital heart diseases associated with right to left shunt. So, which includes phallus tetralogy which is very common and in addition to that complete transposition of great vessels uh, and uh, which may be compatible with life only when there is a shunt like this VSD or uh, patent ductus arteriosus. And examples for this um, I told you already it, uh, tetralogy of phallets, transposition of great, ves great uh, vessels and persistent truncus arteriosus, tricuspid atresia and total anomalous pulmonary venous return. 
and uh, clinical features lastly the third uh, segment of this uh, congenital heart disease is the malformations causing obstruction. So the main pathology here is obstruction and uh, this obstruction may be due to narrowing of the lumen of uh, vessels or the heart uh, chambers or it may be due to complete absence of the openings like uh, tricuspid atresia where you will see the uh, non uh, I mean non patent tricuspid wall. And um, this uh, uh, examples for this obstruction narrowing of vessels coarctation of aorta is a best example for this. So you can see this uh, coarctation of aorta where there is narrowing of uh, the aorta at the junction of PDA uh, ductus arteriosus and um, uh, the, this narrowing is one of the examples for this congenital heart disease. And uh, from here onwards we will be dealing with individual congenital heart diseases which has got some clinical implication. So first one is atrial septal defect and if you look at uh, the developmental uh, development of atrial septum you have uh, two septa you will call this septum primum, septum secundum and uh, these uh, develop and fuse to form what is known as inter atrial septa. So, a septum primum starts from the posterior aspect and comes to the anterior aspect and leaving a space. And this is a weaker uh, septum and in the course of time it will be replaced by septum secundum which is muscular and it is the septum that divides the uh, left and right atria. And uh, during this development there will be communication between the left and uh, right atria through this septa. So, meaning there is opening in the septum primum, septum secundum, um, the, this openings will close only after birth. Okay. And any anomaly in the development of this uh, septa may be associated with the retainment of this uh, uh, openings and which may result which we will call it as atrial septal defect. So I told you already septum primum is uh, originates posteriorly and uh, goes anteriorly and septum secundum originates anteriorly and goes posteriorly. And uh, foramen vivale is a natural opening in the septum secundum and uh, this closes soon after birth. So persistence may be associated with intercommunication. And uh, this is uh, the video representing the development of uh, interatrial septa, septum primum and septum secundum. And, uh, so you can see that uh, bluish uh, structure that is septum primum coming from posterior to anterior and septum secundum anterior to posterior even though it is represented in a wrong uh, way here. But what you should uh, appreciate in this uh, video is the presence of openings in the both the septa and this opening is very essential for intrauterine survival wherein the blood from the right uh, atrium and this, this is very essential for intrauterine survival. Soon after birth it should close in order to uh, make the circulation in a proper way. Uh, the same thing the two septa you can see that uh, septum primum, septum secundum and septum secundum is the strongest one and any defect in this uh, openings may result in permanent uh, opening and uh, which you will call as AST. And uh, the person who suffered from ASD may have, suffering from ASD may have very huge heart you can, and uh, this huge heart may extend towards the right side. You can see that uh, shadow, bulging shadow in the right lung field, it is due to enlargement of the right auricle. And uh, say atrial septal defect are classified into depending upon the type of involvement, you will call it as uh, sec secundum ASD where secundum of, uh, septum secundum is defective and this is the most commonest form of ASD which you will come across. So 90% of ASDs are constituted by this. Septum uh, primum anomalies are very very meager and uh, septum sinus venosus defect constitutes another 5% of the total anomalies. And you can see that uh, atrial septal defect varies manifestations. And, uh, the most common type of ASD if you ask me septum, I, I told you septum secundum type it um, among the ASDs this is the most common again and it constitutes around 6 to 10 percent of the total number of ASDs. So mechanism there are many mechanisms probably enlarged uh, foramen vowel failed to close 
or there is uh, excessive resorption of the septum primum which is which is supposed to occur and um, then inadequate growth of the septum secundum also results in the uh, larger gaps which cannot be filled and there will be atrial septum defect okay and uh, this uh, a patient with the ASD may develop in the course of time mitral stenosis. When ASD is associated with mitral stenosis, you will call it as Gutenbecker syndrome. And a patent foramen vowel is another congenital anomaly. I told you in second septum secundum, when it is developing, it will have a hole which you will call it as a foramen vowel and it fails to close, close uh, then it results in patent foramen vowel. Okay. Normally, by the age of uh, 2 years, it should close. And a persistence of this uh, uh, hole is associated with uh, patent foramen vovale. Okay. And the imp clinical importance of this uh, patent foramen vovale is that this paradoxical embolism. So, paradoxical embolism, um, I told you already, it is uh, the thrombus from the right entering into left circulation, uh, which is paradox. Okay. And uh, this uh, patent foramen vovale, uh, you will see the uh, patency and patency due to non-fusion of the septum primum with septum secundum. So, when these two fuses, there is no hole or communication between the atria and here the septum primum will not fuse with the septum secundum. So, the pers there is persistence or co uh, interatrial communication, but because of this uh, uh, higher pressure of the left atrial side this septum uh, primum will be pushed on to the septum secundum and virtually there is no communication. But there are, so this paradoxical embolism can occur during our daily routine activities when the right side of the heart in, uh, pushed into higher pressure. It happens during the coughing, sneezing and also bowel movements uh, due to straining activity during bowel movements. And uh, the importance of this is when the thrombus is on the right side, it can go to the left side because of increased pressure and uh, uh, which opens up the foramen vevel which is otherwise closed by the septum primum because of increased tension on, on the left side. Okay. And another congenital anomaly is the uh, patent ductus arteriosus. Ductor, uh, ductus arteriosus communicates with the uh, communicates pulmonary trunk with the aorta. And uh, this usually is required for the survival in the intrauterine life, but soon after birth within 2 days it should close. So, there are mechanisms which are responsible for this closure, I told you already that is reduced uh, uh, prostaglandin U2 levels and also increased oxygen saturation and uh, what do you call that uh, fibrotic tendencies that are stimulated in the patent ductus arteriosus soon after birth. And uh, this uh, patent uh, ductus arteriosus. Uh, will be converted into a fibrotic band in the normal life and you will call this as ligamentum arteriosum. Sometimes it persists and when it is persisted, uh, per per persistent you will see, uh, you will call this as patent ductus arteriosus and because of high pressure in the aorta, after birth this uh, aortic blood enters into the pulmonary circulation and uh, this is uh, the left to right shunt and it causes increased tension in the pulmonary vasculature which will call as pulmonary hypertension. So, this image represents uh, the communication between the aorta and the pulmonary uh, trunk. And uh, this uh, the autopsy or uh, autopsy uh, chest showing the uh, fibrotic band connecting the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So, this is uh, ligamentum arteriosum. And uh, patent ductus arteriosus most commonly seen in maternal infections and uh, clinically you can appreciate maternal infections especially caused by rubella and clinically you will hear a very harsh murmur, rumbling, harsh murmur which you will call it as machinery like murmur. It is a continuous murmur, continuous murmur and complications include uh, pulmonary hypertension I told already and infective endocarditis. So, here you should know that any com abnormal communication that is we will call it as shunt and any abnormally altered walls are the source of infective endocarditis. Okay. And um, uh, so, this uh, diagram represents uh, the patent ductus arteriosus. So, communication see that after birth it should close, if it is not closing uh, you can see the uh, blood from the aorta entering the pulmonary vasculature which causes pulmonary hi hypertension. Okay. And uh, the other uh, congenital anomaly is ventricular septal defect. Uh, 
uh, ventricular septal defect, um, uh, if you look at uh, the development of interventricular septum, uh, the septum from uh, the muscular septum grows from the apex towards the base and uh, there is one uh, septum growing from above which will call as membranous portion. So, the uh, inter ventricular septum has got two membranous uh, two structures known as membranous portion and the muscular portion. Depending upon the um, fault in migration, it may have a opening. Okay. So, depending upon this opening, opening you will call this uh, we can uh, uh, classify this into membranous VSD and infundibular type of VSD. Membranous VSD involving only the membranous septum, infundibular VSD involving the muscular septum of the interventricular portion okay. and uh, this um, may have varied uh, uh, sizes of holes a small or large and small sizes usually are ignored and because they tend to close in, uh, in the course of time over years it may tend to close spontaneously but membrane that uh, bigger holes must be surgically tackled. So, usually membranous uh, uh, VSDs are larger in size whereas muscular or infundibular VSDs are smaller and multiple. You can see that um, image where you can see the intercommunication between the left atrium and also oh, sorry left ventricle and right ventricle through a membranous uh, area on the top. And here representing the communication between the ventricles through the defect in the uh, muscular portion of the interventricular septum. So, I told already and if you look at uh, the commonest uh, uh, things uh, the membranous portion I told you that uh, it is single uh, large and infundibular ones are the multiple and small ones and uh, this uh, 80, 70 to 80 percent are associated with other congenital anomalies. Isolated VSDs are rarer and it constitutes only 20 to 30 percent of VSDs. Mm, larger VSD I told already it is associated with pulmonary hypertension and smaller VSDs may close spontaneously. And here the diagram represent a defect in the membranous portion of the interventricular septum. We are looking at the heart through the left ventricle. And here you can see that the interventricular septum, septum has a hole which is represented by a probe within uh, kept within that hole. Okay. And it is involving or it is seen in the muscular portion of the interventricular septum. So, you will call it as infundibular type of VST. Again the same thing. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe to this channel.